You are graduating from university soon, all your allowances from your parents are going to stop and you are expected to pay all the bills by yourself. You'll probably be wondering this to yourself, how much does it actually cost to sustain your own lifestyle living in Singapore with your full-time job? Well, I'm 30 years old this year and I've been living in Singapore my entire life. So in this video, I'm going to share all my bills that I have in August and you have my promise that I'm not going to get keep a single thing. So let's get into the video. So before you see the expenses for this month itself, let's first look at the expenses of July. You see this entire table here summarizes all the things that I spent for in July and I spent a total of $3,656.83. So the main things that stood out for the month itself was my anniversary dinner and a new camera gear that cost me around $700 plus in total. So I'm happy to announce that in August there were no such big expenses. Woohoo! So the grand total should be lesser for this month itself. So let's start with the smallest ones on the list which is donations and phone bills. So I'm going to group some categories together because otherwise there'll be so many different points and this video is going to take for ever to film but for donations itself i spent 55 dollars and this was a donation that my mom made for me towards one of the temples in singapore so now that we are all working adults my mom always reminds me to have the heart and the generosity to donate money to temples or any other charity organizations so this might be something that i want to do more in the future as my income continues to rise as well so it's nice to help people out knowing that this money is something that i can very easily waste on you know having more luxury food and drinks going to the movies spending it any way i want but it would be something that's really really precious and could help somebody out which makes it even more important to do so so for phone bills it's just my usual m1 bill that i pay 70 dollars and 22 cents every single month so no more extra charges like when i went for my japan trip itself so this brings a total to 125 dollars and 22 cents for this category the next category is going to be miscellaneous subscription so i usually spend most of this money on the subscriptions for my youtube channel itself most of the things that i subscribe for are tools to help me find better ideas titles and thumbnails for videos for you guys so if you watch my previous money diary video in july you know that I said that I would stop finding new subscriptions to add to the list. Well, I'll be very, very honest, I did not follow through on that promise itself and I added one more new subscription to this list this month itself. So I currently have seven subscriptions on the list and these are all of them from smallest to biggest. Brace yourself, this is going to be a lot and a mouthful. So Google Storage costs $4, Flat Icon costs $15.89, Notion costs $16.20, YouTube Premium costs $17.98, Photoshop costs $31.12, Creator Hooks Pro $40, and finally ViewStats $67.81. So this brings the total for this category to $193, almost $200 for all the things that might actually help me on my YouTube channel in that sense. So the newest addition was actually Creator Hooks Pro that I added to the list itself. This is basically a tool that can help me to break down viral YouTube titles into frameworks that I can better understand and use for myself. I think this investment is going to pay off very well in the long run as I experiment with more interesting titles and topics. You guys can expect more interesting content to come in the following month or so regarding money and personal finance and maybe any other challenges that I have along the way that excite me as well. Adding this category in, I have spent a total of $318.22 so far. The next category will be transport, insurance and rent. So for transport, I spent a total of $207.42, which is slightly less than last month. So that's finally a win for me, which is fantastic. So I must be honest that I do take Grab, Gojek or Uber home after work two days a week to save time. Actually, there's no more Uber here. It's more like Tada that we are using. This is a useful time and money hack for those of you guys who can afford it. I'm going to be very, very honest it's not something that you should be taking early on in your career where you're starting out and your salary isn't that much. You should be saving as much money as you can. This is a personal finance channel. Please use your money wisely in that sense. But of course, this is a useful time and money hack for those of you guys who can afford it. If you can take caps at non-peak hours like 8 p.m. or so, the rides are usually very cheap. So personally for me, what I do is on the days that I'm going to end late for work, I book a grab hitch early in the morning so that people can accept the ride later. And it only costs me $9.20 instead of the usual $12 to $15 cap rides. So I also reached home in around what 15 minutes or so compared to around taking 30 to 35 minutes to reach home by public transport. This is just my way of saving time by spending a little bit of money every single week. For insurance and rent, it stays relatively unchanged as I'm still living with my parents so I give them $500 a month and I pay $200 a month for insurance as well. This category is going to be the most important for you guys especially when you come out to work. You want to keep your transport expenses as low as possible. Take public transport as much as you can. Singapore's public transport is really really convenient and also very very cheap 
cheap to use compared to other countries as well so don't waste it and you also want to start buffering money to pay for insurance and rent money which is basically money that you're going to give to your parents as well in Singapore in Asian context we talk about filial piety very very often uh, giving money to your parents is something that you know most families will consider quite important so you have to buffer for these two main things don't forget about that this brings the total so far to $1,225.64 now comes the most interesting categories which are investments these are usually what I pay my editor Husby for editing these awesome YouTube videos to upload on the channel for you guys so the last two months have been pretty expensive in terms of investments because I've been producing two YouTube videos per week in order to get my YouTube channel monetized I finally got it monetized and I think I should actually make a YouTube video to share how much money I made this month itself on YouTube it isn't a grand amount of money which is why I don't know maybe that's why I'm you know it's stopping me from making that video itself if I was making thousands of dollars I'll probably be putting on the channel by now already because it's going to be very good clickbait for anyone who is interested and watching in that sense but I think I'll do a video on that in the future as well but of course I realized you know into the challenge after I got monetized I was feeling a lot of pressure to produce two videos a week in order to get the you know channel monetized so I decided to reduce it back to one video a week to chill out and you know focus more on learning and you know reframing some things in my mind to have a little bit more clarity and I spent a total of $496 this month on YouTube editing $15.90 for two wires for my SD card reader and the two dollars and 92 cents for this book called the billionaire fast lane so one of the things i'm definitely very very big on buying is actually buying books and investing in my own knowledge and learning to learn from books as well so this book is basically very very interesting because books are basically an amazing way to learn things and get the maximum value from these authors they have condensed their what maybe their 20 30 40 years of experience all into a book that you can learn from a couple of hours so you're really getting so many years of wisdom just by putting in the effort in order to read and enjoy some of these books i'm not asking you to read books that you hate of course find authors that you like find youtubers or people that you really enjoy their videos and if they recommend a certain book you are likely to like it as well because you know you're kind of on the same vibe or frequency of these youtubers but basically this was a book that was introduced by ali abdal and i really want to learn the contents of this book i haven't read it yet i'll be very honest i was reading his feel good productivity book and i was reading the gary v's day trading attention yeah those two books were what i was on my mind but this is going to be the next book on my list itself you know perhaps i might even do book review videos like what ali does to summarize and talk about my learnings from these books itself let me know in the comment section down below if there's something you guys would be interested in but even though it's around 500 dollars that i spent for investments itself it's still way better than last month itself where i was spending around 1400 dollars on investments so this is another win for me as well i put all these under investments but they are really just me trying to build my business on youtube and with all this money every single month so unless you guys want to start a business on the site like me perhaps save up this money first don't put all your money into whatever you want to do right now so quickly maybe think about it a little bit more think about going the route where you know there's less expenses incurred when you first start working and maybe save up a little bit more so that you can readily deploy it when you decide what to do with it next and you're really serious about it so this brings the cumulative total to $1,770.40 as usual the most interesting category will be the food and drinks so I spent $953.38 on food and drinks this month it's slightly higher because of two main reasons one was that i decided to treat my family to a seafood meal that cost 245 dollars one thing i want to start doing more is to actually treat my family to more meals out i've always been a little bit more on the frugal or perhaps you know from an asian context a stingy side when it comes to you know spending money on food or all these kind of things but i realized that one of the ways that i can actually repay my parents and you know enjoy the time spent with them is really to buy them a meal and really to enjoy that meal with them in that sense this is actually a really nice secret from them but i'm actually planning for a trip to vietnam next month and i'm actually planning to fully pay for it so they don't have to pay a single cent and they can just enjoy themselves while they are there this will also mean that next month's money diaries will be a lot more expensive but it's definitely worth it the second reason why the food expenses are a little bit higher is because i'm reordering or rather ordering this pre-packed healthier food from nutrify meals as well i'm not sponsored by nutrify in any way or another but if nutrify meals wants to give me a discount for any of my you know my followers or anything like that feel free to kind of hit me up on my description box down below in my emails my instagram or anything like that as much as i talk about investing in the traditional sense in terms of money i think one of the main main things you should be investing in would actually be investing into your health and i'm hitting the gym more often right now so i want to eat healthier and invest in my health a little bit more but if you guys can invest in your health in the long term definitely do it as early as possible as you guys start working a little bit more you're earning your own sort of income you'll probably be wanting to spend lavishly on food and drinks or you know buying those kind of brands products that 
you know you can enjoy and show people that you are doing well in your life but of course please budget make sure that you're spending within your constraints as well there's nothing wrong with spending and enjoying luxuries in life you only get into problems if you spend thoughtlessly and inflate your lifestyle beyond your own means for those of you guys who made it to the deep end congrats if you made it to this part of the video you deserve to know the grand total so for the entire month of august i spent a total of two thousand seven hundred and twenty three dollars and eighty four cents this is so much lower than last month of three thousand six hundred and fifty six dollars and forty three cents if you've been following my videos you also know that i'm setting aside money for my taxes sinking fund and travel fund i must say that i totally forgot to account for taxes for the last few months in that sense so i have to pay back the interest and save extra with this month's income thankfully i earned a little bit more this month itself and i also spend less which is awesome so i'll be able to buffer for this mistake stay tuned for my august income video to find out about more about how much money i earn in august working in singapore hopefully this video has helped to give you guys a bit of an insight on how much money you might be spending when you start working as well if you enjoyed this video here then you'll probably enjoy this video here on how i make ten thousand dollars a month working in singapore thanks for watching have an amazing day as usual and i'll see you guys in the next few videos bye bye